Well, hello there, friends. Caramelized onion. <laughs> One of my favorite things in the world to eat. I love them on steak, on fish, on burgers, on mashed potatoes. I love them on tomato with sarala. I put them everywhere. You can eat them by themselves. They're delicious. I'm going to show you how to make it. A quick recipe today. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell. And stay tuned, friends, because we're going to make it together right now. I'm glad you're here. Okay, friends, well, <laughs> this is a delicious recipe, friends. This is a quicker one, because I made a long one a couple of years ago, then lasted probably, uh, I don't know, the 30 minutes, and it took a while because I made huge quantity. I used to make huge quantity when I was in a food business. Now that I'm relaxed at home like you guys, I'm a, I'm a YouTuber, <laughs> and I'm going to make a quicker recipe, friends. Two or three onions. Right here, I got two already sliced. I'm gonna slice one more. We're gonna do them in a fry pan. They're gonna be done in no time at all. Whole different concept. Very simple. First, we're gonna cut the onion. You clean it, you take it out, uh, and you're gonna cut it with, remember, pole to pole. Always with, with the, the line. Follow the line. Don't cut it across unless you're making onion rings. All right? So look, all we're doing, friends, we put the knife on top, we hold it like this, and we go forward. Very simple, right? Forward. See the, mo the movement? Oop, forward. All right? Now we got to put it there, right there. It doesn't matter what we do. We keep, we're going to cut again with pole to pole, with the design, okay? Now, on the, on the side right there, we have a little bit, so we cut like this, and we go in, and we don't want to make them too thin, friends, okay? We want to make them, what are they? About like a, a two millimeters, two to three millimeters, a, a, a quarter of an inch or less, Okay, you don't want to make them too thin, but you don't want to make them too thick either. All right, so you get on the top, and when you get to the top, friends, this is a little uh, unstable, so put it down, right? And do the same thing here, and it makes it easy, okay? Push this aside. Okay, I'll do it again one more time, okay? So remember, at the beginning, make sure you're nice and close, okay? And, and you know, three millimeters, it doesn't, no, nobody's measuring, okay? We want to be relaxed here, friends. So remember, when you get to the top, it's, it's a little... Uh, uh, and stable, so cut and voila. Look, a child could do this, good. All right, friends, I got a fry pan going. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, uh, garlic olive oil. You can put any good olive oil, it would be great. Or, or clarify butter, not regular butter because you'll burn no regular butter, okay? Remember that? Little things, little things sometimes. Sometimes it's all the little things, you know? And 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 another thing, and you, and you and you don't pay attention to it, so you're gonna use regular butter, right? Let's say because you love butter like me, right? You go you use regular butter, and you go, oh, the whole thing is burned. I can't even cook the onion; it's already burned. Uh, because you use regular butter, remember? Regular butter has milk. Milk has protein, and protein burns at 250 degrees. Very simple stuff. All right, now we want to make sure we're hot, and we don't want to be too hot, but we want to be at least. Um, 350, 365, and we're gonna, we're gonna get a little color. This is gonna be a really quick process, folks. We're gonna put the onion in there, all right? And you wanna fill up a fry pan. Now, everybody got a fry pan. Now, you gotta have a fry pan that has a cover. Fry pan with a cover. I know, you'll see why in a minute, friends. We're gonna cook them really fast. The first few minutes, we're gonna cook them. With the first few minutes, we're gonna cook them. They're gonna have the cover on it. Okay, and we're going to capture the steam. We're going to use their water to make this process faster. All right, we're going to put some uh, black pepper in there. Black pepper and salt. We're going to season them. All right, and salt. So now what's going to happen, oh, this is again more, more black pepper. Let me put it right there. And salt. This was a, that was a coarser pepper. I got fine pepper and and coarser pepper, salt. The salt is gonna help us draw the moisture. And what we're gonna do with the moisture, friends, now at this point, you don't wanna be too high. You wanna go like medium, medium. Or you don't wanna be too high, otherwise what's gonna happen, you're gonna have to constantly mix it. We need some of the water to escape, okay? Otherwise they're gonna burn really fast, but they're not gonna cook. I want them to cook. So this is when you put a cover, friends. Actually, you need a fry pan with a cover. So what we're going to do, friends, we're going to cook them like this for about 10, 15 minutes until we get some beautiful color. 
And then we're going to take the cover off and we're going to continue sauteing them and giving them more color. And then we're going to put a gastrique, which is a balsamic vinegar and sugar. I'll talk about that later. I'm going to put the cover on now and we're going to let them cook for a little while. So I'll see you in about five, ten minutes just to show you where we are, okay? Okay, friends, you see, look, I just want to interrupt a little bit here. It's not, it hasn't been very long. It's probably three or four minutes, but you see right there, it's starting to, uh, uh, to get a little more brown here than, uh, than in the middle, so you mix them, okay? And we're going to be doing this for the next 10, 15 minutes, okay? Just like this, mix them up, keep an eye on them. It's not, it, I recommend you stay, you know, right, right in there in the kitchen. Don't go out there and come back too, too long. You want to mix them every so often, okay? So we're going to continue doing that. So I'll do this for the next 10, 15 minutes. I'll be back in 15 minutes. All right, friends. Well, you can see there's a lot of water that came out. Uh, we need that water, otherwise it'll burn, you see? They release a lot of water. Now what we want to do, we, they cooked. The idea is to cook them in their own water. And now that they cook, we're going to brown them, okay? So what we're going to do, and don't worry, if you see like a little bit, you see like you see right there, there's a little brown right there. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all. You're going to mix them, and you're going to mix them constantly, and you're going to do this until you got a really, really nice caramelization, friends, okay? And then we'll finish them up with a gastrique. And the gastrique is a, uh, a, a balsamic vinegar and a brown sugar. What I actually explained, a gastrique is a, is a sweet and sour. We're going to put some sour, and then we're going to put some, some sweet to offset that. So it's perfect balance between the sweet and the sour. Gastrique is called. Now, if you have a aged balsamic vinegar, like this one right here, it's an 18-year-old balsamic vinegar, you don't need the sugar. As the balsamic vinegar ages, it becomes sweet. However, it's more fragile, it's more expensive, you may not have it. If you may have what is called a regular balsamic vinegar and you buy at a grocery store. Look, I'm gonna mix again, okay? I'm gonna mix again and you're gonna see, you're gonna see beautiful color right here. You see, friends? And we need this. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna continue doing this, okay? So let me go back to the vinegar. What you're gonna buy at a grocery store is a four year old, six years old balsamic vinegar, but it's very acid. So um, you need to offset it with the sugar. That's when you put in the sugar. How much of this you put in? How much of this you put in? You'll see it. Not the kind of thing you're going to measure. It's based on how many onion you have, how big the pan is. So you don't want to be bound by a recipe that you measure. You'll see it. We're going to put it in. You want it to be kind of like um, a syrup. And, uh, and you put enough sugar to offset the acidity of the vinegar. That's really it. So if your vinegar is very acid, you got to put a lot of sugar. No, you don't want the, you know, the onion to be really sweet. You want to have a little sweet, though. Kind of, you know, caramelized onion. It's, it's kind of a little sweet, right? Uh, so you want to put enough so they start, see, look, right, when you are here, you got a nice color right there. So um, you want them to be a little sweet, okay? When you put them on top of a tomato mozzarella, put them on, on top of a fish, I think it's kind of cool if they're a little sweet, but that's a matter of opinion. Some people may not like a sweet. You know, I, I like it a little sweeter. It's really, like I said, a matter of opinion. You put as much sugar as you need. So when you test them, if you say, oh, it's <laughs> very acid, like you, you know, you test the vinegar, right? It's very acid, then you put more sugar. It's really simple, all right? Then also we're gonna concentrate on salt and pepper. We wanna make sure there's a good, good amount of salt and pepper, and we wanna keep mixing them, and I'm probably gonna do this another, I don't know, two or three minutes. Let me just check it, see? See, I'm, I'm on medium high now, because so now I gotta be here. I, I, I can't, and I check it, you see? Look. You see right there, friends? Look. You got beautiful color right there. And don't worry about it, the free few of them I burn. You know, in the old days, in French uh, kitchen, they get color on a sauce where we take onion and put them on the griddle. And they would turn black like that. And that would give us color. That's how you get a nice brown color also. So the onion gives you a really, really, really good color. And, uh, and, and, it's, and it's cool. And it's so sweet right now at this point already. They're kind of sweet. They're very sweet. The water that comes out of the onion is very sweet. Anyway, friends, I'm going to continue doing this for the next few minutes until I get a really, really dark color, and then I come back, okay? OK, 
Okay, friends, as you can see, okay, we got beautiful color. Okay, however long it takes, friends. This is this could take 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it is. It's uh, it's up to you. It, you. it depends the burner, it depends the fry pan, everything. So we're gonna put a little bit of um of balsamic vinegar. It was about, I don't know, a quarter cup if I were to measure, right? Somewhere around there. And uh, it's very acid because it's a four-year-old balsamic vinegar. You buy the grocery store. Like I said, if you have an aged one, <laughs> you're doing great. But if you don't have one, then you'll, uh, you'll make the process. See, it's starting to look really good. We're going to put a little bit more balsamic vinegar. And now we're going to put the brown sugar because if this is very acid. This is a very, <coughs> very acid. So I have a dark brown sugar, and I'm going to start putting maybe a, a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons. Okay, I don't want, like I said, I don't want it to be too sweet. Uh, we're going to mix all this up. And, and we got beautiful caramelized onion. You see, friends? Uh, let me tell you, this... <laughs> On top of anything, I love serving them on top of mashed potatoes, uh, on top of fish, steak, on a hamburger, caramelized onion on a hamburger. Let me tell you, this is beautiful. Look at this. That's gorgeous. So now at this point, <coughs> you test them. You test them because you want to make sure your balance between your sweet and sour is correct. That's the only way you'll know. You, you can't follow a recipe for this, friend. You can't follow a recipe at all. So be careful because they're hot. I say that, but I'm, I'm saying that to me. Mm. A little more vinegar. I think I got it. I think I got it, but I'm going to test it again. Mix it up really good. And that's all there is to it. That's all there is to it, friends. I'm telling you, this is really simple, huh? And now what I want you to do, now there's not much here, not much of a quantity, um, but what I want you to do, friends, is, uh, is uh, uh, listen to how you're going to refrigerate them, okay? So, mm. Mm. now you need a little more sugar. <laughs> you see? A little more vinegar, a little more sugar, a little more vinegar, hey, put it again. And then you, you, uh, you, you dance between the perfect balance of, uh, of, of sweet and sour. It's up to you, okay? Remember this, nobody can tell you what to do here. You gotta be your own boss here. Is it too acid for me or give it to some family members, see what they think, all right? Now, what do we do now? Now, as you notice, there still is quite a bit of moisture to come out, you see? So what I do first, I put them flat like this, right? Uh, or I put them on a cookie sheet right now, or a lasagna pan and let them completely, completely cool to room temperature before I do anything. I want that moisture to escape, especially if you're gonna freeze them. If you're gonna refrigerate them, the moisture doesn't really matter that much because uh, it's not gonna change the texture. But if you freeze them, that water that is trapped in there will crystallize, break the texture of the onion, and you're gonna have mush onion, mush onion. I don't know how you describe it, but you, you know what I mean? There's no texture because the, the water molecule, the model dropped, would have uh, expanded and, and destroyed the texture, the consistency of the onion. So if you're going to freeze them, you got to make sure you leave them at room temperature completely, three, four hours. Put them in a container, freeze them for 17 years. When you need it, you take it out the day before, uh, or you take it out two, three hours before, leave them at room temperature, they'll be perfectly fine, really, really quick, okay? And you can use them, all right? That's all there is to it, friends. I hope you make it. They are delicious. Put them on top of all kind of stuff. All right, you're watching me use them a lot. Now that you have a quick recipe, I can use them even more. Friends, I hope you enjoyed. Remember, thumbs up if you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the bell. I'm glad you were here. Thanks for watching.